It has been said that a journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. The Santa Ynez Band of Chumash Indians took that single step more than a decade ago when the tribe began the process of resurrecting its native language, known as Somala. Tribal members live and breathe their culture every day and incorporate the ways of their ancestors into their lives. But what they didn't have was their language. The last elder who spoke the Somala language had passed away in the mid-1960s. Although we had quite a few cultural programs going, we knew there was something that was missing, and that was our language. Research into the Somala language led the tribe to Dr. Richard Applegate, a linguist who had studied the tribe's language more than four decades ago when he was a graduate student at UC Berkeley. He worked with boxes of original notes on the Somala language from John Peabody Harrington, a linguist and ethnologist who specialized in the native people of California. I would come across something like um, Skuthahuchu, and Harrington would just say, he sees the dog. And I didn't know which part meant dog, I didn't know which part meant sees or anything about it. But a while later, I might see something like Siwanahuchu, the dog is barking. And I thought, aha, the Huchu part must mean dog. And so it was little by little like that that I figured out the language. Working with Dr. Applegate, one of the first tasks the tribe undertook was creating a language dictionary, complete with phrases, pronunciation guides, and a history of the tribe's language. The end result of the multi-year project was a 600-plus page comprehensive dictionary. Soon after, the General Council voted unanimously to create a culture and language department, including an apprenticeship program to develop teachers for Somala language classes. The apprenticeship program began um, working under Dr. Richard Applegate. He went through and he developed curriculum for us to learn this language. We couldn't have done this without him. We still have five of those original apprentices, which is fabulous. We are a family now. The language is built in us. And now we're, we are teachers. At our learning center here, based on the reservation, we have after-school programs for children of any age that go down and use the learning center facilities. In 2009, the Santa Ynez Band of Chumash Indians was instrumental in the passage of Assembly Bill 544, the Native Languages Credential Bill. As a result, the tribe's native language can now be taught in local schools. I think the most important way that we've advanced or helped advance native languages in California is through the uh, introduction of AB 544, which our tribe supported tremendously. The tribe has partnered with the Family School in Santa Ynez to make it the first local school to offer Somala language classes. We were just excited to have this partnership with the uh, Santa Ynez Band of Chumash Indians. The reception of the students to learning the language has been remarkable. Uh, within the first two weeks, parents were coming and saying, oh, we're learning so the Somala language, you know, their children are getting in the car uh, and excited at the end of the day and teaching them new words in Somala. Uh, and uh, students were really raving about the program. We get to go beyond the textbook. In fact, we don't even bring the textbook into the study of the indigenous people of this area. And we have it existing right here with our teachers and with the language. So it's sort of a chain. It started off with Maria Solares working with J.P. Harrington, going to Dr. Applegate, and now actually coming to our people. Keeping the language alive is very important to our tribe to keep it flowing for our next generations, to teach our children and other children the language. It is part of who we are. <laughs>